I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Anchorage Assembly and begin with a roll call. Um, Mr. Traney has announced he will be about 15 minutes late tonight, Madam Clerk. Okay. Ms. Drummond. Mr. Traney is excused until he arrives. Mr. Honeman. Here. Ms. Gray Jackson. Honored to be here. Ms. Osiander. Present. Mr. Hall. Present. Mr. Starr. Here. Mr. Tromley. Here. Ms. Johnston. Here. Mr. Flynn. Proud that I converted a bunch of you from saying here to present. <laughs> Mr. Birch? Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. Ms. Drummond, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Glad. Thank you very much. We do have some minutes before us. Which one, please? Second. The minutes of April 19, 2011 are before us. Is there any discussion? Is there any objection? Hearing and seeing none, those minutes are approved unanimously. Minutes of April 26th? Second. Those minutes are before us. Is there any discussion? Is there any objection to approval? Hearing and seeing none, those minutes are approved unanimously. The minutes of May 10th? Second. Thank you. Those minutes are before us. Is there any discussion? Um, I do note, Madam uh, Clerk, that there was one correction on the um, vote count that Ms. Duke took care of. Okay. Basically, so that the numbers correlated with the text. Um, is there any further discussion on those minutes? Is there any objection to approval of those minutes? Hearing and seeing none, those minutes are approved unanimously. Mr. Mayor, do you have a report for us? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to uh, a couple of very, very interesting things happening in our communities, you may be aware. Last week, we had the uh, honor of being visited by the British ambassador and, and his wife, and uh, they were here for eight days, which is very unusual for uh, an ambassador visit, and got to see kind of all things Alaska. And we were also graced with the presence of the uh, Japanese Naval Defense Force, three ships in town for several days, and uh, got to meet with the Rear Admiral and get an update on what's going on in Japan and their crisis. And, uh, and then finally, um, as you may know, next week we um, will be host to 70 ambassadors to the United States from around the world who chose uh, in their experience uh, the United States um, opportunity to, to come to Alaska. So we will once again be hosting the world uh, next week. And then that's followed just shortly thereafter by a visit from uh, our friends in Korea because it's the 25th anniversary of our sister city relationship with Incheon. So we have, it's International Month uh, here in Anchorage, and so far I think everybody uh, has had wonderful experience, and hopefully that will continue through tomorrow, or through next week. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would, under my report, like to note that I've been contacted by a fair number of people over the last week or so who are expressing concerns about the Title 21 implementation. I wanted to share with you that I have had a uh, request in to the mayor to re release um, his proposed changes to Title 21 as soon as possible, and I've been assured that those will be available to the public in July. As soon as they become available, I will ensure that they are posted on the municipal webpage of muni.org. They will then immediately go to planning staff. Planning staff will review and schedule um, those ch proposed changes for hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission. The public will obviously have a chance to weigh in and testify during that process. After PNZ has finished with their comments and recommendations, the proposed changes and any other that staff wants to recommend will go to the Assembly Title 21 Committee. The Title 21 Committee will then review the proposed changes and forward them to the full body for vote. <coughs> I do want to assure members of the public that uh, this is a very important issue for me personally. I have spent 
seven years with this as my top priority as an assembly member, and I very much want to ensure that we get Title 21 done as soon as possible. It just needs to be done expeditiously and correctly. Mr. Drummond, Ms. Drummond on that point? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, for the update. Um, I'd like to know who on the planning staff um, is going to be receiving the changes. Well, Mr. Weaver first, and then he'll assign it as appropriate. I, I'm, I don't know. That's an internal dis You might want to ask the administration. Okay. Is, if Mr. Weaver is present, I'd appreciate knowing uh, which I, planning staff will be working on it, as there was a long-term um, uh, attachment there as well. Oh, Mr. Weaver, you are here. Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, Ms. Drummond, actually quite a few of the planning staff will be working on it because depending on uh, the proposed changes, so will determine the number of resources we need to put towards it to be able to get it reviewed into the Planning Zoning Commission. You may not be aware, but we also have uh, Chapter 10 that we're trying to process right now, which is uh, uh, Eagle River Chugiak um, code that the community wants adopted there as well. So we're going to have to prioritize some things, um, but uh, we, we've got a lot to work on. But we'll put as much resources as necessary to process it. Anything thank you very else? much. Glad to hear it. Anything else, Ms. Drummond? No, that's it right now. Thank okay, you. thank you. The other um, thing I'd like to announce is that we've scheduled an additional work session. It will be on the Heritage Land Bank um, Annual Work Program and Five-Year Management Plan, and it will be uh, scheduled for the 24th at noon. And as such, obviously, we will not be voting on that item tonight, but you're certainly free to comment on it if you'd like to. Um, I've also um, been assured that we're going to have a motion to continue the personnel rules. If you're interested in that topic, there is an S version available, and you should be able to get that off the municipal web page. And I believe there are some amendments coming. With that, um, Mr. Hall tells me he has a vice chair report. I do. I need to share with the body tonight that a number of years ago, the stork was quite busy making deliveries this week. The first being Mr. Jim Posey uh, about 65 years ago today. So uh, celebrating his birthday, I believe our mayor uh, was delivered 60 years ago on Thursday, so he'll have a birthday coming up. And our chair, we don't know how many years ago, but it was on Friday. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have three birthdays that I think we need to give a round of applause for. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hall. I wasn't quite expecting that report. <laughs> Mr. Birch, would you like to start with comments? Uh, no reports. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Flynn. Ditto. Go ahead. Um, I'd just like to mention that I was at a function last week for the New Mexico Amigos, and it's a group of business folks and political leaders from New Mexico that travel around the country once a year, and they went to Alberta, and then they landed in Anchorage. And with them, they brought the New Mexican mayor, and I thought she was the New Mexican mayor, New Mexican governor. And I was very impressed with her. She's the first Latin female governor in the um, United States. And the first thing that she said when she got up to speak was, New Mexico is open for business. The second thing she said was, New Mexico is open for business. And I think she might have said the third and fourth. She was a, a fantastic speaker, and they were a great group of people, and I was very honored to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trombley? No, I'd just like to say Bill Knoll passed away yesterday at his home, and I'm sure a lot of people know, but he did a tremendous amount for Alaska, and he'll be greatly missed. Concur. Mr. Starr? I have no report. Anything else, Mr. Hall? No, ma'am. I think I've said quite enough. <laughs> All right. Ms. Gray-Jackson? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a little bit to say. Um, first off, in terms of the audit committee, the audit committee met on June 10th with the auditors who provided an overview of the audit findings. And for the most part, it was a clean audit. Um, for the first time in a long time, there was only one 
adjusting entry in the amount of $170,950, which is a really great thing. There were um, a couple of unusual transactions identified uh, by the auditors. One was uh, the port expansion project by Marad in terms of contributions for construction and the recording of such transactions, although the auditors believe this to be unusual but reasonable under the circumstance. Also, a request by the Corps of Engineers regarding the port turnover uh, accumulated uh, mitigation funds. The port um, complied and transferred $6.5 million to a third party party part a year and in this amount was uh, recorded as additional cost to construction. And I would encourage all of you at the very least to read the management letter. Um, and if you have any questions, our auditor Michelle Drew is here this evening and so is our CFO and our controller. Also I um, sent an email through the uh, clerk to the audit committee recommending that the ad hoc committee that was established by myself to address the police and fire retiree medical trust will, my recommendations was that it would consist of Everett Robbins, Lucinda Mahoney, Nancy Usera, Dennis Wheeler, and Julia Tucker. And I've also asked, I haven't heard back from anybody yet, maybe you responded today. Um, but anyway, I, I've asked our clerk to schedule our first meeting um, in the near future. Also, uh, June 2nd through the 4th, as you may know, I'm a member of the National League of Cities, Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources Committee, and I had the honor of attending our spring meeting in June, and it was a wonderful, wonderful event. I think Kansas City, Missouri is one of the best kept secrets in this country. We had the opportunity to visit the Smith Electric Vehicle Manufacturing Plant. It was pretty amazing. The uh, nat natural gas and hydraulic factoring, we had a lot of speakers to talk about that. We had speakers to talk to us about sustainability and connection with public health and there were many other issues and I, uh, I have a report from that committee that I'm just going to pass along to the rest of you and with that Madam Chair I'm done thank you very much thank you Mr. Honeman yes uh, thank you Madam Chair uh, first of all I uh, appreciated the opportunity to get outdoors on Saturday I went to several uh, functions and met several of my colleagues uh, at the uh, youth uh, or the Parks Foundation's uh, Cope Street Park I uh, went to the Senior Center at their fair and uh, Huge yard sale. wasn't a whole lot of items left, but I made a few procurements there, as well as the uh, uh, Airport Heights Community Council's uh, picnic on, at the Kisla Park at Scotty Gomez the rink there, and uh, a lot of fond memories with Scotty. Anyway, um, uh, Public Safety Committee meeting is tomorrow at noon at the uh, Buildings uh, Sur Safety Center, or Building Center. I'm sorry, uh, formerly known as Public Works, over off Elmore in their conference room, and that's at noon. But one hour prior to that, we have the ad hoc committee meeting for the taxi transportation issue and uh, working on the uh, specifically the uh, uh, off the road program, I think, which char the difficulties we're having getting cabs late at night, particularly on the weekends and holidays. So all are welcomed, and uh, we've made some good progress uh, on that. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll highlight that not only will we talk with uh, normally public safety, police, and fire about the status of their academies, recruitment, and hiring at the APD. Uh, as well as OEM with any processes is going on. But uh, tomorrow we'll also have a health department present on um, uh, obesity. And, we, and prior we had an obesity task force, and we're trying to revisit the issue and, and see what progress, if any, has been made. And uh, also there's a, a request to appear by a person with the uh, uh, assisted living homes. Uh, they're concerned about uh, 8.80 and how they're classified because some of them are getting... Uh, in excess of the eight calls, but they have several clients. And sometimes the voices are telling their clients to call the police. And uh, they're getting, uh, so in one case, uh, I think they said fourteen or $16,000 in fines in one location. So uh, thank you, I'm sure. And where, did you say where the meeting was, sir? It's at the uh, Building Center, Permit Center, over off Elmore. Very good. Conference room. Thank you. Mr. Traney? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to Lucinda, thank you very much for solving the problem that Widow had reference her tax exemption for having a deceased disabled veteran. Thank you very much. She had gone down to the city twice and called me on it. And I appreciate the fact that after talking to you, her problem was solved. Thank you, Lucinda. So just for everybody else, that what we passed, the voters passed, it's in effect. So if we've got somebody under the age of 60 that is married to a deceased disabled veteran, they can get a tax exemption. Thank you for doing that. They know that. how to do it now. Very good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Drummond.
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, too, had the pleasure of visiting the Japanese training vessels when they were in port last week. Um, and also, uh, interestingly, I was in Homer the weekend before, um, and I observed the Japanese flotilla pulling into Kachemak Bay and lying at anchor uh, for more than 24 hours. Apparently, they arrived in the Cook Inlet uh, area early. So they hung out in Homer, although the uh, commander, when I talked about it to him, said that they didn't have a chance to go ashore. Um, I don't think Homer was ready for 700 sailors. <laughs> um, last weekend was a very busy weekend for all of us, as we've heard. I was happy to see Mr. Um, Hahnemann at the Cope, St Cope Street Park cleanup. We met neighbors. Um, it was a wonderful experience, and uh, I, I cleaned, uh, scrubbed a lot of bollards, which were then painted. It was a lot of fun. Um, then the Spinard Farmer's Market, which is fully um, fully occupied or fully reserved with vendors. It was, it was terrific. The Fairview Block Party was an uh, endless stream of entertainment. Um, and uh, upcoming park fix-its for your calendars, um, Sand Lake Park, July 23rd, 9 to noon. And the Campbell Creek Estuary, which, as you know, is now a, a part of the municipality's um, repertoire of uh, of public lands, July 16th from 9 to noon. And this one also generated the resolution that I'm laying on the table tonight. So thank you very much. I don't think we've got copies of anything you were laying on the table, Ms. Drummond, did they? It's, uh, it's Mark 9B8. I'm sorry, it was buried. That's okay. I see it now. All right. Um, I'd appreciate a motion on the addendum and the late on the table. Move to incorporate. Is there objection? Um, I'll go ahead and read those then. The uh, first item, excuse me, is an addition to uh, the consent agenda A4, AR170. This is a resolution of the Assembly and the Mayor commending Dr. Robert Wilkins for his exemplary contributions to the Anchorage community by being a passionate, active supporter of the performing arts. Um, A5 would be AR171. This is a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizing the sixth annual National Dump the Pump Day in the municipality on June 16, 2011. Item B7 is AR172. This is a resolution stating a temporary non-objection to modification of a conditional use permit for alcohol use for the Rum Runners Old Town Bar and Grill located at 415 E Street to add a duplicate liquor license to be issued by the State Alcohol Beverage Control Board, occupancy of any expanded premises to remain subject to issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy and other non-alcohol related municipal permitting requirements. Under bid awards, item C2 is AM362. This is a recommendation of award to FE Contracting Incorporated for the Harry J. McDonald Center expansion for Municipality of Anchorage Public Works Department Maintenance and Operations Division, $5,854,000. Item under new business, item D18 will be AM363. This is a proprietary purchase of uninterruptible power supply systems from Amtec Solid State Controls for the Municipality of Anchorage, MLNP, $84,394. For introduction, new item F8, AO73. This is an ordinance authorizing a lease for a greenhouse facility used for job and life skills training on a portion of Section 7, Township 13, Range 2 West, Lot 9, between AWWU and Seeds of Change. That's set for public hearing on June 28th and is accompanied by Memorandum 364. Also for introduction, F9 will be AO74. This is an ordinance waiving application of Anchorage Municipal Code Section 1.15.025G, restrictions on employment after leaving municipal service for Beth A. Fleischer to complete with the Community Development Department at, I'm sorry, to contract with them to help finalize and implement phase two of the Hansen Technology Project by assisting with user training for Hansen permitting, inspection, and licensing system software module. Public hearing date Jan uh, June 28th, accompanied by Assembly Memorandum 365. 
Under continued public hearings, there is an S version on the item for 13A2. This is an S version of AO61, amending the personnel rules. Anchorage Municipal Code Section and 3.301516, Employee Relations Department. And then additionally, there is the late on the table item. Um, this would be AR173. It's a resolution of the Municipal Assembly supporting continuation of the Alaska Coastal Management Program and urging the Alaska State Legislature to take all action necessary for reauthorization before June 30, 2011. And that will be number A6, no, B? B8. It's a resolution. I'm sorry. All right, the clerk tells me that it is item B8. Pardon me. All right, is there objection to incorporation of the addendum and the late on the table? Seeing no objection, those items are incorporated. And the consent agenda is before us. Second. All right, so the consent agenda with the addendum items and laid on the table item are, is before us. Excuse me. Mr. Drummond, I think I'll start with you. Is there anything you would like to pull tonight? Um, 9A2. 9A2. All right. And uh, 9B8. And B, nine. B and boy. And the late on the table item. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Just, I have to write it down here. Sorry. Just take me a second. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. One more, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, 9C1. 9C1. Got it. My pen just died. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Mr. Drummond? Um, I'll, I'll hold for right now. Thank you. Mr. Traney? Hold 982. Anything you'd like to pull, sir? Madam, um, item 9D12. I don't want to pull it. I just want... It's the 40th Avenue extension. We need to get that done. But I hope they stop blocking off Lake Otis with signs that go everywhere and it's impossible to get from one end of Lake Otis to the other. I appreciate him doing this, but I don't want to keep seeing change orders come through on this. I want would, him to get it done. Would you like him, I'm not going to pull it. Okay. Do you need a I'm concerned next time I see it for an extension, I will pull it. Okay. I think they all heard that. Do you want to comment oh. from them at this point? Or? No. Okay. So nothing to pull then, sir? Nothing to pull. It speaks for itself. You've been down that road. Okay. Mr. Honeman? Yes. Uh, for reading 9A1. 9A1. Uh, 9B as in boy 7. 9B. That's from the... Uh, addendum. Addendum. Got it now. And 9 Delta 5. 9D5. And Delta 5, all right. I'm sorry, that's a, that's a new business. I apologize. I'll, t I'll just end, scratch that last one. You do not want Delta 5. Right. And you don't want Bravo 5 either? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll take that. 9 Delta 5 is one one to pull. It is under the consent agenda. I'm sorry. Okay. So you do want to pull for Delta 5. Yes. All right. Anything else, sir? That's it. Okay. Ms. Gray-Jack. No, Chair. thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, somebody just said something. Well, I said no, thank you, Madam I heard Chair. you, ma'am. Somebody was yelling or saying out while you were speaking. You're hearing voices. I was hearing voices. That's a bad sign, Mr. Traney. Mr. Hall, sir, anything? Uh, yes, 9A4 for reading. 9A4, all right. 9D2. D2. 
is that D is in boy or D is Delta. 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 Okay. And 9 D 11. And also Delta 11. Delta 11. All right. Mr. Starr? Uh, 9 D 12 for purpose of a conflict. All right. Delta 12. Mr. Trombley? 9 Echo 2. 9 Echo 2. Anything else, sir? Ms. Johnston? Uh, yes, um, 9 A3. 9 A3. Anything else? No, thank you. Mr. Flynn? <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, from the addendum, item 9 a alpha five. Okay. And I think everyone got the other ones that I had on item nine, Bravo seven as a point of information. I would I don't do not intend to move that. So thank you for pulling pulling it, Mr. Hahn. If we can just a motion on it, I'd be most appreciative of my colleagues' consideration. You're not going to move the ordinance at all. Correct. Okay. And that was? That's 9 Bravo 7, which he, Mr. Hahnemann already pulled. I'll speak to it when we get to that. Okay. Very good. Mr. Birch? No items. All right. I'll recap to make sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything from the administration? All right. I'm going to recap to make sure that we got it correctly. On the regular agenda, 9A1, A2, and A3. Continuing on down on the regular agenda, 9C1, 9 Delta 2, 9 Delta 5, 9 Delta 11, and Delta 12. And then continuing on the regular agenda, 9E2. And then on the addendum, uh, A4, A5, Bravo 7, and Bravo 8. Did I miss anything? Okay, it appears not. Is there any objection to approval of the rest? Oh, let me put it up on the board. Please vote on the rest of the consent agenda. That passes unanimously. There were, I think, some appointees. Mr. Mayor, did we? We appoint, made some appointments. Is there anyone here that... If you've been appointed to a board or commission, we would like to meet you. Could you come forward and introduce yourself, please, and tell us what board or commission you're, you've just been appointed to? Uh, my name is Kyle Brennan, and uh, I've been appointed to the uh, Geotechnical Advisory Commission. Thank you very much for your service. That's an important board. We appreciate your work. Thank you. Anyone else? Doesn't appear to be so. With that, the first item before us is 9A1, a resolution recognizing and honoring Sharon Leon for relentless dedication to youth. I like that word and community engagement in Anchorage Youth Court. Could I have a motion? Who to approve? Second. I don't, Mr. oh, okay. You surprised me when I heard you both moving and second. Well, it looks, like that, looks like Mr. Flynn got, got ahead of me on the move. I caught up with you. Okay. I caught up with you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, is there objection to approval of this? Seeing none, Ms. Leanne, will you come on down? And who's reading? Go ahead, Mr. Honeman. Thank you. So resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly recognizing and honoring Sharon Leon for her relentless dedication to youth and community engagement in the Anchorage Youth Court. Whereas founded in 1989, Anchorage Youth Court is a juvenile justice system to stop illegal behavior through positive peer pressure in a formal court setting operated by youth in grades 7 through 12 for youth with adult advisors and Whereas the youth court opportunity gives youth offenders personal accountability, offers youth attorneys good training, and promotes positive intervention 
and provides the community with an effective criminal justice response to juvenile offenders. And, whereas Anchorage Youth Court has expanded to become a charter member of the United Youth Courts of Alaska, in 1999 received representatives of 27 states as Anchorage host for the first National Youth Court Conference. Co-sponsored two Alaska State Youth Court Conferences held in Anchorage, trains student volunteers who, in turn, have provided an average of 7,000 hours each year since inception, engages adult advisors, holds court weekly, files for grant money, initiates fundraising, and maintains operational relationships with community, school, and court system stakeholders, promoting juvenile justice education and accountability, and whereas soon after Anchorage Youth Court accepted its first case in 1989, Sharon Leon signed on as Youth Court Coordinator, a job that has grown with program demands to full-time Executive Director. And, whereas Sharon Leon is a graduate of Anchorage High School, now called West High, and returned to Anchorage after graduating from Western Washington University with a bachelor's degree in education. And, whereas for more than two decades, Sharon Leon has executed the vision, goals, and mission of Anchorage Youth Court in her board membership on United Youth Courts of Alaska, speaking engagements at youth court conferences and community forums, volunteer recruitment, training and oversight, budget input, grant applications, fundraising, and in all the operational relationships that require support day in and day out to focus and maintain community engagement in this program. Now, therefore, the Anchorage Assembly recognizes and honors Sharon Leon for her 22-year tenure of relentless dedication to youth and community engagement in the Anchorage Youth Court. Passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this 14th day of June 2011. Thank you so much. Sharon, you want to make some comments? Then we have some comments for you. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much um, for tonight, which was almost a huge surprise. They had to tell me last night. But uh, your, your support through all of these years has just been wonderful. And thank goodness, because the doors are still open for our next executive director. But uh, the whole city of Anchorage has been so receptive to that new, unusual uh, program that started in 1989, because who thought kids could do all this, right? But they have. So thank you. And it really made me tired listening to all that stuff. I think I better retire. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Honeman? Well, Ms. Leon, I didn't make me tired reading it, but uh, I was really impressed even the more. I appreciate all your years of service, with, uh, particularly in the youth justice programs, uh, and it really helped take the burden off of what we know as the state side with, uh, with the McLaughlin Youth Court and juvenile in intake and such. So all through the years, as I've actually brought a few offenders, I guess you could say, but on the return in, I was able to help with the youth court volunteers as they came through the department and helping to present the tours and, and mm -hmm. mentoring some of the youth that are coming through. So very impressed with the program, and I know you had your fingerprints all over it. They'll tough shoes and big shoes to fill. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sharon, I was staff in 1989 when you introduced the youth court to um, Senator Begich and uh, Mr. Traney when the Making a Difference program was established. And that was the first time I ever heard of the youth court. Thank you for your hard work for so many years, and it's been just a wonderful pleasure working with you. And your shoes will be very, very hard to fill, and you'll truly be missed. Thank you. I'm going to miss you, you too. Thank you so much, Alvy. Mr. Traney. Sharon, thank you very much for delivering what you promised us you'd do. And as a parent, I really appreciate your tireless efforts with our children working on it. I think Rose worked with you there, and it was yes. always fun to see her, inter her inter interact with you. She learned a lot from your program, so thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. I, I get to say something now. <laughs> Um, I first uh, met Sharon when my our oldest daughter decided she wanted to be involved. I had no clue what to expect, but
but it was a remarkable, fulfilling experience, not only for her, but for her friends. I learned a lot. I had the privilege to serve as a board member with you, and I, my respect for you is extremely high, Sharon. You, you have done an outstanding job and help mold this into a premier organization. It's a great, great asset for this community and our youth. And a personal thank you. You're very welcome. Very good. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I was really disappointed when you quit being on our board because you were going to start working with Title 21. And <laughs> now, <laughs> thank you all. That will never end. Oh, oh, can't forget that. Um, the next item before us is 9A2. This is AR 162, a resolution recognizing, honoring, and thanking Lisa Arnold for 25 years of service to the municipality of Anchorage. Move to approve. Second. Second. Is there any opposition to approval? Seeing none, that's approved unanimously. Lisa, would you come up here, please? Thank you. This is a resolution recognizing, honoring, and thanking Lisa Arnold for her 25 years of service to the municipality of Anchorage. Whereas Lisa Arnold began her service in 1986 with the municipality of Anchorage as a senior office associate in the purchasing department and shortly thereafter was promoted to office associate in the resource development division of employee relations department. And whereas she progressed in her career with resource development to become the municipal training officer. In 2007, Lisa was promoted to labor analyst with the Anchorage Police Department and later in 2007 was appointed to the labor relations director position. In addition, she served as acting director of employee relations for several months in 2009. And whereas, when Lisa was the Labor Relations Director, she was the municipality's lead negotiator in numerous collective bargaining negotiations under the direction of three different mayors. Her ability to communicate in a clear and concise manner with various union representatives allowed her to easily gain the respect and confidence of the union representatives. Lisa's relationship with the unions allowed her to be proactive in resolving problems when issues arose and to resolve grievances while protecting the interests of the municipality and the public trust. And whereas, Lisa has provided many valuable services to all levels of employees throughout the municipality through her exemplary skills in mediating, internal consulting, management coaching, problem solving, facilitating, training, and contract negotiating. And whereas, on June 2, 2011, Lisa Arnold retired from the municipality of Anchorage, leaving behind many employees who have improved their skills and value because of her leadership role. Now, therefore, the municipality of Anchorage recognizes the many contributions and honors Lisa Arnold for her 25 years of dedicated service to the municipality and the citizens of Anchorage, passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this day. Do you have any comments, Lisa? Just a few. First of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Sullivan and the Assembly for this recognition. It's hard for me to believe that 25 years just flew by. And for those of you doing the math, I started with the municipality when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to um, say that very few employees have the opportunity to work with each and every municipal department throughout their career, and I've been very fortunate to have had that opportunity to work directly with them. In employer relations, we don't play favoritism, but there are three departments that are very near and dear to my heart. First of all, um, the Anchorage Police Department. As is indicated on this resolution, I was afforded the opportunity to work very closely um, with the Anchorage Police Department. There was a lieutenant that I started out there with, um, Lieutenant Honeman was his name. And I was able to work very closely with the command staff and have the utmost respect for that department. Second of all is my relationship that I was able to establish with the Anchorage Fire Department. Most recently I was very involved in a strategic partner with that department and my works with Chief Hall, Chief Bashu, and Chief Drozdowski. We had a collaborative, cooperative um, relationship and I, I, I value that immensely. And lastly, the Employee Relations Department. Well, I, that extends out to all of the Employee Relations staff. There are two sections that I would like to at least recognize. One is the leadership 
management team under the direction of Nancy Usera, myself, Karen Norsworthy, and Daniel Fagley made, to be quite frank, an amazing team. Lastly is my staff, which was the labor relations staff, Ms. Dieski and Darshan Tucker. Their commitment and their um, diligence in doing their job made me look good, and I am forever grateful to them. The last group that I will recognize is not employees, but my family, who has always supported and loved me. Thank you. Mr. Honeman? Well said. Well, Lisa, I, uh, I, I got to tell you, you know, you said your staff made you look good, and certainly, uh, I think I was all in my office uh, serving as the personnel officer <laughs> for about two or three days, and, and the person that was there at the time was sent back to City Hall for some work both ways. And it was, I, was I was pledged that I would have her to my availability at any time, and it became quite, quite evident that not only was that, that was not possible, but she also soon found employment elsewhere and left. So I felt very much underwater, and I was holding my watch up, and I remember seeing you come in with a lifeline, and you really quite sa quite literally saved my career in that pos position and certainly made me look good. So I, uh, I really uh, bonded quite he heavily with you since we shared the office, and uh, pretty soon it became your office, and I thought it was pretty cool how transition occurred, and then I wasn't there anymore, and you had to deal with an even larger bullheaded lieutenant named uh, Gardner Cobb, and he was really... Uh, I know he was blessed to have you there as well. So I owe you lunch. I haven't forgotten that. And uh, I appreciate all the years you've done for this city and, uh, and working with you myself. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hi, Lisa. I started with the municipality three years before Lisa did. Um, and I can vouch for it. She was 12. They made an exception and hired her. <laughs> but it, it's been a pleasure working with you, Lisa. I, I've taken throughout the years many training classes that, that, that you gave, and, and I learned a lot, frankly, from those classes. And I want to thank you for your service, especially to the citizens in this community. And I wish you well in your new job. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, it's always hard when you lose a very, very valued employee, and it's, it's hard today to see you leave, but I want to thank you for all your years of service, and I appreciate your comments. Over the last couple of years, I think, uh, I think your department uh, and your leadership team uh, with Nancy and the group has really set a new standard of excellence in employee relations, and uh, you were such an integral part of that. that they always say when you lose an employee, it gives you a chance to hire an even better one, but in your case, that's going to be tough. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you. The next item before us is 9A3. This is AR169, a resolution of the Assembly and the Mayor recognizing and thanking the Anchorage Rotary Club, the Rasmussen Foundation, Municipal Light and Power, Davis Constructors and Engineers, Anchorage Public Library Teen Advisory Board, Anchorage School District Student Advisory Board, for major contributions to the creation of teen underground at the Lusak Library. No approve. Second. Is there any objection to approval? Hearing and seeing none, this is adopted unanimously. Is there a representative for the teen under... Oh, I should have known who'd come forward. Hi. <laughs> this is a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly and the Mayor's Hall have been recognizing and thanking the Anchorage Rotary Club, Rasmussen Foundation, Municipal Light and Power, Davis Constructors and Engineers, Inc., Anchorage Public Library Teen Advisory Board, Anchorage School District Student Advisory Board for the major contributions to the creation of the Teen Underground at the ZJ Lusak Library. Whereas a major goal of the 2009 Library Community Plan, a community supported vision for the future of the library, is to encourage a new generation of library users through the creation of a dedicated space where teens can study, research, collaborate, and interact in a stimulating and safe environment and where there, whereas there is currently no dedicated space for teens in the ZJ Lusak Library and resources are currently combined with preschool and grade school children and whereas the Anchorage Public Library is focused on the launch of a generation renewal of the ZJ Lusak Library it does not have the current capacity to address the immediate needs of teen patrons on its own and whereas the Anchorage Rotary Club with major financial support from the Rasmussen Foundation Municipal Light and Power, Davis Constructors and Engineers, joined forces with the Anchorage Public Library Teen Advisory Board, 
and the Anchorage School District Student Advisory Board to generate community support and private investment to create Keene Underground within less than a year of the launch of the project. And whereas the library provides powerful out-of-school learning experiences, and Teen Underground will be a space for experimentation where young people explore traditional and digital media and use hands-on interest-based learning to strengthen their creativity and critical thinking skills. And whereas the Teen Underground project builds on current research on how teens learn through me new media and on the national work being conducted on 21st century skills and the needs of the new workforce in America. And whereas Teen Underground will engage young people in learning through the use of digital media while also utilizing traditional literacy such as reading and writing to improve Anchorage's students' participation in building their community, helping each other with homework and developing networks that extend beyond the walls of their individual schools. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Anchorage Assembly and Mayor Dan Sullivan recognize and thank the following contributors to Teen Underground at the ZJ Lusak Library for contributions of lasting significance for the city and all its citizens. Anchorage Rotary, Rotary Club, Rasmussen Foundation, Municipal Light and Power, Davis Constructors and Engineers, Anchorage Public Library, Teen Advisory Board, Anchorage School District Student Advisory Board, passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this 14th day of June, 2011. This was a, pro was a uh, combination of many people's efforts. And I want to personally thank Ernie Hall for his contribution to the Teen Center and Jennifer Johnston for your contribution to the Teen Center. Uh, Jim Posey, thank you so much for the contribution. Uh, this project resonated so well with the students and we involved them from day one. And what was so exciting was to see the culmination of them walking into that room. 89 teenagers showed up one hour and five minutes before our grand opening on Friday. And that spoke volumes. They just were vibrating with uh, excitement. And I don't think I've ever seen uh, a room of teenage, a group of teenagers that were more excited about an educational opportunity that uh, is a space dedicated directly to them. I mean, it was like they were waiting for the opening of a new Harry Potter movie or something. They were that kind of excited. So their joy is really evident in all the pictures that we took and we're posting on the website. So thank you very much for this um, recognition. It was a great project, and uh, we're very excited to see the programming as it's going to be a great ed addition to our community. Thank you very much. And could you give us your name, please? I'm Carol Butler, Anchorage Rotary Club project chair. Excellent. Ms. Drummond? Thank you very much. Um, we, most of us missed the grand opening because we were in work sessions at City Hall last Friday, but I did um, make an effort and arrived in the middle of the afternoon when many of those teens were still very involved. Um, I got to play with the, I, what I'm told is the largest smart board in the state, which was an amazing experience. It's like a giant iPad. And every one of the iPads and other electronic media was out of its cabinet and in the hands of a teenager, and they were all incredibly busy. And it was, uh, it was great. It was great to see that facility, and I'm very happy that uh, it's in place for them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, thank you. I wanted to thank Carol, the Rotary Club, and all the sponsors for what a great project, and had the honor of being there to help cut the ribbon to open the center, and you could hardly hold the teens back once that ribbon was officially <laughs> cut. Uh, clearly a great project. They're very excited about it, and as Ms. Drummond mentioned, uh, the technology in there exceeds, of course, my understanding, but uh, the kids know what they're doing. And, but again, thank you so much. It's these kind of private-public partnerships that uh, really enhance our facilities in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Johnson? Carol, I think you're being a little modest. Um, I think you were a very strong motivator of this whole enterprise. And, and um, I think you've given us a fine example of what a community-based library is. And you really did bring this project together. You brought the teens in. You got it so it was part of their project and ownership. And I think you should take um, a, a round of applause just for yourself. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jennifer. And I, I would also like to just recognize the 18 Rotarians that put their uh, specific skills to the task of making this teen center a, a reality in, uh, in nine months. And uh, thank you. And certainly leadership is part of it, but a captain without its crew is nothing. Right. Thank you, Jennifer. I, I, I also would like to mention that um, in our discussion, our education discussions with the mayor and his um, his education forum, I've mentioned that public knowledge is a very strong part of any kind of education reform, and I think you started that discussion in this team at the Grand Center. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to thank you, Carol, and everybody who was involved, because anything to do with our teens is a wonderful, wonderful thing for this community. So I just wanted to say thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Bravo. Thank, thank you. The next item before us is 9A4. This is a resolution 170 um, from the Assembly and the Mayor commending Dr. Robert Wilkins for exemplary contributions to the Anchorage community by being a passionate, active supporter of the performing arts. Is there any opposition to approval? Seeing none, that's approved unanimously. Dr. Wilkins, could you come forward, please? <coughs> We have representatives. We have representatives. I see. <clears throat> Whereas Dr. Robert Wilkins became involved with the Anchorage Concert Association as a volunteer board member in 1952, and whereas, while continuing to practice medicine full-time in 1957, Dr. Wilkins took on the volunteer position of manager director of the ACA, serving in this position for more than 20 years, and whereas part of his work involved attracting artists to Anchorage, taking many trips to New York, Los Angeles, and other large cities, and whereas Dr. Wilkins developed connections in presenting business to bring artists such as Isaac Stern, Van Cliburn, and the New York Philharmonic to Alaska, and whereas in 1981, after the ACA hired its first executive director and full-time professional staff, Dr. Wilkins moved out of the role of managing director and continued to serve on the board of directors, guiding the organization and stewarding the organization's mission, and whereas almost six decades after joining the board of directors, the Anchorage Concert Association, Dr. Wilkins retired from the board in the fall of 2010. Now, therefore, the Anchorage Assembly and Mayor Sullivan resolves Dr. Robert Wilkins is hereby commended for his tireless efforts over the last six decades to make the performing arts a valued part of Anchorage quality of life, passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this day. Could you identify yourselves and... I'm Kristen Lindsay. I'm, a board, um, I'm on the board of directors. I'm Jason Hodges. I'm the executive director for the Anchorage Concert Association. I'm Stephanie Kessler and a former board member. Excellent. Uh, and we'll be presenting this to him tomorrow uh, at a celebration for all of his years of service with the Concert Association. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Ms. Johnson, did you want to make a comment? I just wanted to say that um, I had the met Dr. Wilkins actually when I was still living in Fairbanks and I have a great deal of respect for him. He uh, actually got my husband to join the board for a while. Um, Alan didn't realize he was so interested in the arts. <laughs> but Dr. Wilkins was a very hard person to say no to and, and we do it, greatly appreciate all of his hard work. Thank you. Please pass on our regards and deep thanks. Thank you. The next item before us is A5 AR171. This is a resolution of the Assembly recognizing the sixth annual National Dump the Pump Day in the municipality on June 16, 2011. Move to approve. Is there any opposition to approval? Seeing none, that is approved unanimously. Mr. Wilbur. 
Whereas on June, 6, June 16, 2011, marks the sixth annual National Dump the Pump Day as a day that encourages people to ride public transportation to save money, protect the environment, reduce our dependence on foreign oil, and improve the quality of life for all Americans. And whereas people who ride public transportation can save, on average, more than $10,000 per year based on today's gas prices, the cost of owning a car, and the average unreserved parking rate. And whereas for every $1 invested in public transportation, $4 is generated in economic returns, and whereas U.S. public transportation use reduces the country's carbon footprint by 37 million metric tons, the equivalent of 4.9 million households using electricity in a year, and whereas U.S. public transportation use saves 4.2 billion gallons of gasoline per year, the equivalent of 900,000 cars filling up every day, and whereas public transportation use in 439 urban areas in the United States saved 785 million hours in travel time and 640 million gallons of fuel in 2009, and without public transportation, congestion costs would have risen by nearly 19 billion. And whereas, by using public transportation options such as public transportation, ride sharing, walking, and biking, people are encouraged to save money, help the environment, reduce dependence on foreign oil, and improve our quality of life, and whereas public transportation is an important part of our nation's transportation system and provides citizens with travel options other than driving a single occupancy vehicle, now therefore the Anchorage Municipality uh, recognizes Municipality, Municipal Assembly, sorry, recognizes June 16, 2011 as National Dump the Pump Day in Anchorage, Alaska, and joins with municipal and state transit agencies across the country in promoting and encouraging transit ridership on June 16, 2011. Passed and approved this 14th day of 2011. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you want to make any comments, Ms. Wilbur? Um, I would just uh, just briefly, I think um, this dump the pump campaign is nationwide, and um, if you haven't had the opportunity to ride the bus, it's a great opportunity to do it, and um, we run a great service, so ride the bus. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. The next item before us is... AR 172, this is the temporary non-objection to modification of conditional use permit for rum runners. Mr. Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I said, no motion, please. But this is before us. I was working with the representative of the restaurant slash bar uh, to address this. And subsequent to our preparation and submittal of this resolution, we learned that, um, that it appears that work began before permits were in place. And, and while these folks are generally pretty good operators, uh, didn't want to set the example or the, or the standard uh, where we blessed that sort of sh uh, side uh, or a shortcut. So uh, rather than move this forward, we just asked that let, let it lie. Thank you. Mr. Honeman? I, I would just actually had pulled it to see if I could add on as a co-sponsor with Mr. Flynn, so I'd be happy to help sponsor support uh, it once they get their situation straightened out. and. Uh, uh, that they have been, remind the body that they have been fairly responsive with other issues. So hopefully they'll get that straight out. Mr. Traney? Just to move to postpone this item indefinitely so we can get rid of it now and can come back when it's ready. Okay. Well, either that or if it's not moved, it'll drop, sir. So we're fine. postpone it indefinitely, and that just cleans it off the table. Well, I, I don't think it's necessary, and the clerk agrees, so I'm a little unsure what you to agree, do. You agree, Barbara? It's not on the table because okay. he's not, not introducing it. So. Then we'll leave it okay. alone. Thank you very much. The next item before us was the late on the table item, AR-173. This is a resolution in the supporting continuation of the Alaska Coastal Management Program and urging the legislature to take all action necessary for reauthorization before June 30th. Ms. Drummond? Uh, Madam Chair, is it all right if I read this into the record since it's late on the table? Well, you need a motion first, ma'am. Okay. Uh, move to approve. All right. Certainly, if you'd like to read it. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and Wait a minute. Let's see if anybody objects to it. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any objection? Seeing none, um, that's passed unanimously. And go ahead, Mr. Thank Holmes. you. I always have a concern when we have laid on the table items that the public isn't able to see um, immediately. And this has turned out to be very timely. Um, whereas the Alaska Coastal Management Program is set to expire on July 1, 2011, if the state of Alaska does not reauthorize it, and whereas Alaska will lose its ability to comment on and review projects in federal waters offshore of Alaska if the Coastal Management Program ends, 
And whereas the Alaska Coastal Management Program is critical to giving coastal communities like Anchorage a voice in development projects, and whereas the Alaska Coastal Management Program assures Alaskans have a voice in federal decisions regarding oil and gas development, fisheries, oil spill response, and mining, and whereas without a coastal management program, Alaska would not meet federal requirements for major infrastructure projects and associated jobs, such as a deep water port for loading oil and gas in federal waters. And whereas expiration of the Alaska Coastal Management Program could jeopardize or significantly delay almost $30 million in Alaska share revenue sharing from Outer Continental Shelf oil and gas leasing. And whereas expiration of the Alaska Coastal Management Program would end Alaska's eligibility for the Federal Coastal and Estuarine Land Conservation Program and therefore risk funding for important Anchorage projects, including the Campbell Creek Estuary. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Anchorage Assembly respectfully urges and requests the Alaska State Legislature to take all action necessary to reauthorize the Alaska Coastal Management Program by June 30, 2011. Passed and approved by the Anchorage Assembly this day. Did we, did we vote? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any, uh, any objections? Seeing none, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item of force is 9C1. This is AM 345, recommendation of award to TaylorMade Ambulance to furnish three 4x4 mobile intensive care units or ambulances to the fire department for $554,181. Um, I, I asked to pull that, Madam Chair. Move to approve. Second. That item is before us. Go ahead, Ms. Drummond. Excuse me, I'm slightly lost. Hang on one second. That's all right. Thank you. Okay, my question, Madam Chair, is to the administration. Um, I appreciate the, um, the savings by uh, ordering three ambulance of the same type at the same time. Um, but I question why it took one year and two months after the voters approved the new, the new unit for the Sand Lake Fire Station to even order it. And now it looks like it's going to be another five months before it's even delivered. Uh, we'll let Deputy uh, Chief uh, Bashu uh, address that. Hi, Chris Bashu, Deputy Chief AFD. Uh, the bid went out originally for the uh, ambulance, and uh, it, it's a complicated process, as you well know. Mm -hmm. It came back, and uh, it, it was determined that the uh, the number one bidder Number two bidder said, hey, wait a minute, this guy didn't meet the spec because of uh, some, basically what were some pretty minor points, but yeah, in fact, he didn't meet the spec. And so the next bidder was thinking he'd get the contract. No, he didn't meet the specs either, so it had to go back out again. That's, that's basically why there's been a delay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the care taken with that because this is an important piece of equipment. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Oh, Mr. Honeman, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, Ms. Drummond to the body. Uh, the Public Safety Committee has been uh, uh, diligently asking uh, both police and fire for of any con issues involving equipment and status of the academies and such for ongoing for several months, and they've always been very responsive. So I apologize, Ms. Drummond, if I didn't share that back with you. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Thank Mr. You. Honeman. Mm -hmm. Seeing no one else in queue, please vote. That item, that item passes unanimously. The next item before us is 9 Delta 2. This is a AM334 Building um, Board Examiners and Appeals Appointment. Mr. Hall? No, I, I'm not going to move this at the request to the administration. All right. The next item before us is 9 Delta 5. This is an application. This is AM346. It's an application for a new wholesale wine-only liquor license for Veritas Wines, number 5085. Yep. Uh, move to approve. 
That item is before us. Mr. Honeman, do you have any discussion on it? Yes, uh, and I apologize for the lateness in getting this out. I, I was looking through and realized that we had several restaurants up for uh, application. Um, and I, it's a little confusing on the code, but uh, it, I might have answered my own question reading through it a second or third time. Um, is it my understanding that uh, just since this is a wine, wholesale wine liquor license, that there is no conditional uh, use permit required? Uh, that's, I think that's what is stated here under 21.50.160. Uh, the reason I ask is since this is kind of a quasi-package store and in light of the recent uh, ordinance, I was wanting to make sure that the uh, conditional use stipulated 100% uh, ID checks at, as would be applied to a package store. But I'm not seeing where this is requiring a, a conditional use even though it's listed under state statute title four. So it's Mr. a little confusing. It was a little confusing, but I think I might answer that question. Mr. Vakalis? I do not have the answer for that. Um, as Mr. soon as Weaver? the legal department gets back, we can get it for you. Okay. Unless Jerry has the answer. Mr. Weaver, did you hear the question? It's, it appears that under one part of the code it says a conditional, uh, conditional use to sell alcohol, and in, in another part of the section is saying that uh, business is located in I-1, it's a wholesale wine only, that there's no conditional use required. Is that right? Madam Chair, Mr. Honeman, that, that's correct. We'd need to confirm that I'm looking at the code, but that is my recollection from the code. Good. Okay. Are you comfortable moving ahead then, Mr. Yeah, Honeman? All right. Is there any further discussion? Is there any objection to approval? Seeing none, that's approved unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Honeman. The next item before us, excuse me, is 9 Delta 11. This is AM340, Amendment Number 1 for Utility Relocation Agreement with ACS for the Chester Creek Aquatic Habitat Restoration, Westchester Lagoon Improvements, $47,231.87. Move to approve. That item is before us. Mr. Flynn. Um, Madam Chair, just as usual, the, uh, one of the parties in this is uh, Alaska Communication Systems, which is a major client of my wife's, and I am typically conflicted out of considerations where they are a party to the transaction. All right. Uh, Mr. Flynn has requested, since this is a, a represents potentially substantial um, income involvement for his family, that he be excused. I'm going to agree with that and state that Mr. Flynn has a conflict and as such be excused from the vote on this matter. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this matter? Hearing and seeing no one, um, please vote. And that item is approved 10 to 0. Thank you. The next item before us is AM341, Delta 12 on our agenda. This is Amendment Number 3 to Proust Construction Company, LLC, uh, for the 40th Avenue Extension Lake Otis Parkway to Dale Street Project, $250,000. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Starr. As previously ruled, I have a property that I'm developing and managing that abuts the project, and I'd like to be exempted from the approval or disapproval of this item. Thank you. In continuation of past practice, Mr. Starr is excused and is ruled to have a potential conflict of interest on this matter and will not be voting. Is there any discussion on this amendment? Hearing and seeing none, please vote. That item is approved 10 to 0. Thank you very much. With that, um, we are on moving on to the information reports. The first item before us is 9E2. This is AIM 60, the monthly investment report for April. M move to approve. Um, could oh, could they move to accept? Staff, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Trombley. Roger. You want, want to speak to that? Sure. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Trombley. No, the, the reason I just, just wanted to comment, I, I understand that these, these come delayed, and I completely understand why. Um, but I, I just wanted to, to point out to the administration and, and, and to this body that although this is through April 30th, you know, what, this is now June 14th, 
in some of the things that we've seen is that, you know, the, the Fed's going to stop pumping money into the bond market, and they've come out with that. And I know that our recent bond sales was, was successful. But that, that's important to, to take note of. And then, you know, the jobs report just came out. That was bad. Unemployment's up. It's over 9 percent. That's the U3 rating. The U6 is anywhere from 17 to 20 percent. And so I know Alaska doesn't always feel the same things that everybody else does. But when you're dealing with the market, it, it is it does affect not only the United, you know, we got to look at not only the U.S., but also what happens in the world. So just in moving forward, I think it's important to, to keep these things in mind. And um, and it's, it's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on this matter? Seeing none, is there any objection to accepting this report? Seeing none, the report is accepted unanimously. Thank you very much. With that, we are finished with the consent agenda in almost record time. <laughs> And let's see, we can continue because it's after 6. So we are at 13A. And this is uh, an AO61, an ordinance amending the personnel rules. And it's already been announced there is an S version. And I believe there will be a motion for um, that will cause us to not vote on this tonight. But if you would like to speak to us about the personnel rules, please come forward. Madam Chair, point of order, can they talk to us on both the original and the S version please. so they know? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. And if you could just start by identifying yourself. My name is Susan Lawrence. I'm sorry, was it Lords? Lawrence. Lawrence, thank you. As a public employee, I'm grateful to be employed by the municipality. However, I'm respectfully submitting my comments regarding AO 21161S version. Ma'am, I apologize. You're soft spoken. Can you speak into the microphone? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you. Section 7, discontinuation of length of service program for new hires. For the union employees, the service recognition program was replaced with the performance step program. Currently, just to put into context and using myself as an example, I've almost completed six years of employment. I'm still waiting to qualify for the SRP and receives 3.5 in addition to my base rate. Well, employees that I supervise who've been working less time for the municipality than I have already receive an additional 6.5% added to their base pay for participating in the PSP, a benefit that hasn't been extended to the non-rep employees. Compared to the private sector, yes, the private employers probably don't have a program such as the SRP in place, but in the private sector, employees do receive bonuses, such as a Christmas bonus, or they may work on commission. Or if the employee is doing well, the boss can increase the employee's wage at any time. There are no rules to wait for a merit anniversary date or promotion. There are some items that are easily compared to the private sector, like the going wage rate for a specific job but benefits don't really compare as well. The other point I'd like to make is that no one knows what the outcome between the city and union negotiations will be. The union contracts don't expire until the end of 2013, so why reduce our benefits now and not later? Regardless, by then most of the other employees will have qualified for step two of the PSP program, and those employees will already receive 13% in addition to their base pay and most likely be grandfathered into the program. The only other incentive program that is available to non-represented employees, the Employee Incentive Program, if an employee is selected, consists of a letter from the mayor, a Muni Merit Award shirt, and a gift card. And then I wanted to discuss or give my comments in Section 15, Discontinuation of Injury Leave Supplement, IBW employees receive the injury to supplement at 75%, AMEA and plumbers at 80%, and fire and police at 90%. Again, there is no guarantees 
that the unions will agree to any concessions and why is the city cutting a benefit for the non-reps now when most of the union contracts don't even expire for another two years? Um, as employees, we haven't been provided with actual numbers of how this will affect employees at different pay levels and what the net effect will be to the employees pay with and without the injury supplement. Can you summarize, ma'am? Yes. Um, as an unwrapped employee, I'm looking for the assembly to make sure that we are treated fairly as compared to the other employee groups. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Drummond has a question. Thank you. I just wanted to know, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate your uh, talking to us. If you had anything else to say that you were unable to say because of time constraints, I'm interested in hearing it. Yes. Um, I had just one more point on Section 16 of Bereavement Leave. Uh, that the Teamsters, Local 71, Plumbers, Pipefitters, Operating Engineers, APDEA, and AME receive four days for bereavement leave when travel out of state is required. And I'm asking that you consider adding this benefit for non-represented employees as well. Thank you. Ms. Gray Jackson has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for coming out this evening and expressing your views. Thank, thank you, you for Madam the Chair. time that, I, um, that you provide for this comment. Okay, thank you. Thank Is you. there anyone else who'd like to speak to us on this matter? <coughs> I don't know where that. <laughs> but you've got to point it at you. There yeah. you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, well, my name is Elizabeth Zib. I am a over 20 year municipal employee and I'd like to come and talk to you about um, my issues with this particular ordinance. Um, first I'd like to give you just a little bit of a background on the service recognition pay for the non-representatives. It was given to us in AO 1, uh, 2003, one, or, yeah, 2003-43 and at that time the reason that it was given to the non-representatives is because it was part of the AMEA contract and it was to give us more parity on, um, with that contract with those employees. In 2005, the Begich Administration tried to repeal that from the non-representative employees. We successfully defeated that based on that the union contracts still had this benefit in, their co in the contracts and at that time the Begich Administration said that they were going to try to get the um, service recognition out of the contracts. Well, they did, but then they gave them the PSP, which was a much more generous um, benefit than the non-reps are currently receiving. Also at that time, the Assembly had asked, or the Administration had said, Mr. Do Dave Otto had said that the, um, they were going to be looking to um, create incentive programs, performance incentive programs for the non-represented employees. To date, there is no, no program been established for us. Um, again, I just hope that you will think of us in fairness and equity to some of the other union employees out there um, and hope that you don't vote for this. The other thing I would like to mention also is on the portion of the ordinance that is for standby pay. The um, committee uh, neglected to address uh, a grievance that was settled about two years ago for the IBW, or the, excuse me, the MLMP non-reps that are on continuous standby and that their standby is not taken away. Once they are called back, they are still able to receive that standby. And I'd hope that that language would get straightened out in the ordinance before it gets passed. Have you had a chance to see the yes version? Because the yes, standby portion was taken out. Yes, but they still didn't clarify that for employees that are on continuous standby, that they don't lose their standby pay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mr. Honeman? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for your years of service to the community and its citizens here. Uh, secondly, did, as a work group, as non-represented employees, were you given a briefing or any kind of notice about no. these potential? In fact, we, we we heard about the S version on. I mean, on we got a copy of it. We actually got it distributed a copy of the S version on last Thursday, um, and I can't remember exactly when we got the other version. But then we were told there was never an official briefing with the non-representatives on these changes to the personnel rules. It occurs to me in 2005-ish, I believe there was, uh, I believe it was Mayor Beggage and actually the mayor himself came and, and we were drawn into, I believe it was the PAC, and actually we discussed several things, potential changes to the non-rep uh, 
issues as well. And I do remember the longevity versus performance and, and the simply getting a percentage of increase while you're for every year you've been here doesn't make as much more sense than having someone actually meet some benchmarks in performance. So anyway, thank you for your comments and I appreciate it. I just wanted to know if you've had a chance to get briefed on this entire potential changes. Um, no, just what, what we were, um, I believe at MLMP we were given an, it through an email from our HR department and, um, but nothing else. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to us? My name is Terry Daniels and I'm a non-rep in the IT department and was recently appointed to the Personnel Rules Committee. And I wanted to comment on the email I sent uh, to assembly members yesterday. And there's three points I'd like to make. First, I want to thank Mr. Cheney for bringing up in the work session and that was in the definition of immediate family that we're including same-sex domestic partners, but we are not including opposite-sex domestic partners. Second one had to do with uh, Section 3.30.82 programs to improve efficiency of the employees. And after I sent my email, Mr. Sarah responded to me that that particular section is outdated and is superseded by another section later in, uh, in the personnel rules, uh, 3.30.8 Part 18. And in reading that, and some of my peers have read it, feels it kind of waters down career development and training for employees. And the last one which has been mentioned before is having to do with the service recognition. Many people I've talked to feel the elimination of service pay for anyone hired after July 1st, 2011 is a negative move. The elimination of service recognition pay combined with PERS Tier 4 provides no incentive for, for a new hire to stay with the municipality for any length of time. They'll be looking to jump ship as soon as the opportunity knocks on their door. The failings of Tier 4 were documented in the newspaper recently. Elimination of service pay further widens the gap in benefits between non-rep and represented workforce. Some represented staff receive service pay as early as two years and at a rate higher than non-reps who must wait ten years. A quote from one of my peers, as a supervisor and manager for the municipality, is it necessary that we plan for our employees' continued growth throughout their careers? I'm afraid with the recent changes in PERS and the changes that are proposed for the personnel rules, we are sending a message to our current and future employees that MOA is not our employer of choice. This is important to me because I feel for the short term, we hire, when we hire employees, our benefit that we not only work for the short term, but also the long term. What we're creating here is a constant revolution of training new hires. What we want is an experienced workforce that can do more with less. This will not be the case as we lose employees due to diminishing the benefits. I like getting in new blood. It motivates the seasoned workers and brings in new ideas. They both feed, a, feed off each other and create high performance teams that are efficient in the field. We have to work to maintain this balance in the years to come. They are both necessary as we're constantly working to drive down costs, perform faster and better, end quote. The burden of sacrifice is once again being placed on the shoulders of the non-represented staff. In 2009, we faced a budget shortfall in every workforce, non-represented and represented, contributed something to that shortfall. Some groups gave up pay raises. Some groups took leave without pay. Every represented work group receives some reward in the future to compensate for what they gave up. The non-reps got nothing. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thank Craney you. has a question. It's a quick question, sir. Has have the administration come to the non-reps to you guys and explained what I'm this has, has the administration come and explained what this S version means to you guys? No. Not have you guys looked at the grievance procedure in here? Excuse me? Have you looked at the grievance procedure in this document, the S version? Yes. What do you think about the grievance procedure? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to come speak to us on this matter? Anyone else? Hearing and seeing no one. 
public hearing is closed. I thought we were going to move to continue the public hearing, Madam Chair. Well, okay. I wasn't clear on that, sir. My understanding that's, was you were going to push my button, ma'am. Okay. Hold on a minute. Just a minute. Mr. Flynn, I had thought when we talked that you wanted to continue. You didn't want to vote on it tonight, but you thought you might want to at least move an amendment. So and that's why I closed it. Madam Chair, um, I'll happily move my amendments tonight, or we can wait until next time. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But I think we want to make, keep the public hearing open lest others wish to speak to us, given that the S version just came out Friday. My question to the clerk, if we keep the public hearing open, can we go ahead and make amendments? That was my understanding, too. So my suggestion is we go ahead and close it. You go as far as you want to on amendments, and then it will continue. And then there can always be a motion to have a public hearing. Madam Chair, go ahead, Ms. I'd like to move to continue this public hearing until the next meeting, whenever that is. Thank I'll you, Madam Chair. It. Okay. That, the motion to continue is before us. I just want to clarify then Mr. Flynn does have at least two amendments he wanted to present on arbitration. So if you're interested in getting those, you may want to contact Mr. Flynn. Correct? Anything else, Mr. Flynn, you wanted to add? Nope. All right. Is there objection to continuing the public hearing? Hearing seeing none, the public hearing will be continued till our next meeting. Thank you very much. Madam Chair. Ms. Gray Jack. June twenty eighth is the next meeting. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is there is there a is it appropriate to have a dinner break now, Ms. Duke? Could you check? Yes. All right. At this point, well, the assembly will take its dinner break. It'll be about twenty to thirty minutes. We're in recess. I'd like to reconvene um, this meeting of the Anchorage Assembly. At this point, we are at item fourteen A on our agenda. This is AO65. It's an ordinance authorizing. Wait, reading. Basically, it's about downtown enforcement of parking violations. So if you'd like to come speak to us on this matter, please come forward. Hello. <laughs> really rather not. My name is Mary Barr, last name B-A-R-R. -R. There are two items in this ordinance that bother me. One is in Section 2, Item C, where it says includes but is not limited to. The not limited to, to me, implies that the definitions can be expanded without public hearing. And the other item is item seven, improper parking. What is improper parking? It's, it's a foggy definition. And those are the two items on there that, that I have questions about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My guess is we'll talk about that during debate. I'm sorry? Well, yeah, my guess is that will be covered during debate. Outstanding. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to us on this matter? Hearing and seeing no one, the public hearing is closed. Move to approve. Second. <clears throat> Discussion? Mr. Honeman. Well, I believe, obviously, the voters spoke. Uh, this was something that's been, thanks to Mr. Hall and uh, I believe Mr. Flynn, who worked on this. Uh, extensively, and I believe uh, that the ACDA will do uh, what it's been directed to do and within the limits of the ordinance. And I think we had some pretty good discussions, so I urge approval. Thank you. Mr. Traney. Uh, to AO 2011 Section 2, page 2, beginning at line 30, is amended, adding the new subsection 25.35.025 as follows. The delegation of enforcement of parking violations to the Anchorage Community Development Authority is for an initial period of three years, subject to re reauthorization. The delegation of enforcement shall come before the assembly for renewal, review, and renewal, and shall terminate by operation of law on June 30, 2014, unless affirmatively continued by ordinance prior to its expiration. If I could get a second. Thank you. We all remember the old parking authority. 
And if you don't remember it, watch on TV parking wars in Philadelphia and Detroit. I don't want to see this become what the old parking authority in Anchorage was, and I don't think it will be. But what this does, this brings it back to us for an initial three-year period to make sure that doesn't happen here. So I would appreciate if you would take a look at this and understand that what this does is protects the public. Thank and you. gives them an initial three-year shot. Okay. Thank you. There are people in queue, but I don't know. I'm going to ask if you want to speak to Mr. Trainee's amendment that you raise your hand so I know. Mr. Trombley? Yeah, Dick, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, is there a reason you chose three years, not one or two or? As on advice of counsel. Okay. Usually when the council says it's good, we go with it. You can ask our attorney. Okay. Is there? Julia? Julia, can you? Why would you take three years? Why would you put three years rather than a shorter, longer time period, ma'am? Oh, no, what if it blows up after one year and it's just it's a disaster? Do, I guess we could always come back to it. But. Through the chair, that's correct, Mr. Tromley. And the three-year period uh, was consistent with the boards and commissions um, three-year period for sunsetting that uh, the assembly had the work session on on Friday and will be coming in front of the assembly um, next meeting. And so it seemed to be a long enough period of time to at least have a review uh, in front of the assembly by that time. So Dick had asked me to think about whether three or four years in that time frame. And okay. I thought three, but there, through the chair, there isn't any uh, anything to prohibit the assembly asking for a review prior to that time. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? No, ma'am. Is there I, any? I'll speak to the to the ordinance. Yeah, let's wait and deal with the amendment right now, though. Is anybody else like to speak to Mr. Traney's amendment? Is there any opposition to Mr. Traney's amendment? Seeing none, that amendment is incorporated into the matter before us and approved unanimously. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hall, you're next. Yes, I have a very minor amendment that I want to make to this ordinance, and that is in Section 3. This ordinance shall be effective on August 1st instead of July 1st, 2011. Second. Ernie. Is there anyone who would like to speak to Mr. Hall's amendment? Seeing no one, is there any opposition to Mr. Hall's amendment? Seeing none, Mr. Hall's amendment is incorporated into the matter before us. Um, Mr. Trombley? Yes, I, I was just wondering if anyone knew the answers to Mary's uh, the issues that she brought up. Ms. Tucker? Ms. Tucker? There were two questions that were presented from the speaker. One was about the term improper parking, and the other one was about. But it's not limited to. Um, on violations, but is not limited to. Could you explain those two terms um, for the benefit of all of us? Do you have the? If you have the ordinance, I can direct you to line. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Ms. Tucker. Okay. I wasn't just, I was, thank you, Madam Chair. I was wondering which of us you were addressing. Well, I think because, you wrote this, didn't no, you? No, I did not. Oh, I'm sorry. Dee, would you like to answer it instead? Yeah, no, I don't know the answer to that. I wondered if uh, Mr. Pollock would know. I, I might can help just a little bit from my past profession, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Well, I'd prefer the author to yeah. answer, but. The author was actually Rhonda Westbrook. Okay. Primarily. Mr. Michaelis, who would you like to have answer the question? I would uh, like to have the police chief answer it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Holman. No worries. Chief, did you get the question? I'll repeat it if it... Thank you. All right. The question was, on Section C of the ordinance, it says, parking violations includes but is not limited to. And so there was some fear that that would basically give carte blanche to go ahead and expand. Can you tell me how you would have done, deal with that? I'm not sure about the not limited to. My, my understanding of the way this was written, and I didn't draft it, was that they would 
the parking the ACDA or whoever got the contract would be limited to parking offenses only. So Title IX has parking offenses, and they're different from different kind of moving offenses. So, for instance, um, if you were parked at the meter longer than two hours, if you the meter was expired, things like that. Uh, if there, I think there's a parking ordinance that says you can't park an unregistered vehicle on the street. That would be different than driving an unregistered vehicle on the street. So they would be able to cite for the parking version of it, but not the moving version of it. That was my understanding of how this thing was written. But I don't know about the actual language. That does seem confusing to me. Not lim it seems to me that you'd want to say limited to parking. Well, it, it does say this is shall be parking violations, and then the but not limited includes the list. So I'm assuming there would be some other item on the list that would, could be a parking violation. Maybe that's what it means. Is it's, lim it's specifying certain parking violations, but acknowledging that there may be other parking violations in Title IX that are still not moving violations that would still be citable. I guess that's how I'd interpret that. Okay. But frankly, I hadn't picked up on that question until just now. Okay. The second question was if you could define improper parking. I don't know there's a legal definition of improper, so I would just say a parking violation. I mean, improper parking would be, in my view, a, a violation of the parking ordinances. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Um, Mr. Trombley, was there anything else? Well, my, my point is, and I think I understand what Mary's saying, is that how much of this is going to be subjective to the person writing the ticket? If there's no clear definitions, and the person could say, I mean, that's what happened last time, was like, oh, well, you, you're, there's dirt over your emission sticker, so I'm going to write you a ticket. You know what I mean? Like, how much is subjective and how much is, is not? And I think when you have things in there that says improper parking, well, that sounds like a subjective thing. When you have something that says, but it's not limited to, then that's a broad spectrum of possible violations. Well, whoever is writing a citation has to make a judgment call on whether the elements of the offense are satisfied. Uh, and that's why you have due process in court, so that if if I decide to write Speaker Osiander a, or Chairperson Osiander a ticket, mm -hmm. and she doesn't agree that, with my assessment, that she's met the elements of the crime, we go to court and let the judge decide. Um, and if, you know, as a manager or supervisor, if you have employees that never can get that right, um, then you've got a performance issue you need to deal with. But most people get it right 99% of the times, and occasionally the judge overrules us. I think that applies fund will apply the same to the people doing the parking citations as it does to the police officers. The, the individual violations specify exactly what has to happen in order for uh, the violation to occur. So if the meter is red, they get the ticket. Um, most parking violations are pretty cut and dry, and I don't think there is a lot of judgment area there. Um, I'd have to go back and look at each one, though. Paul, do you remember, um, for instance, an obscured plate? Is there a parking version of that, to your knowledge, or is it a mover? That would be a uh, <coughs> mover in my mind. Mover on the thinking of mover. plate. It would be tabs in the wrong location could apply to both parking. Chief, uh, Thank you for asking. I open the door, Madam Chair, for my donut. Well, you're next in queue. Could I allow Mr. Yes. Trombley to finish, sir? Yes. All right. All right. Mr. Honeman, go ahead. That was Mr. Train was asking the question, what if they have the month and the year reversed? And, again, that's, a, that's the application of uh, proper placement of the tabs and decals. If you remember, Chief, I started my career as a community service officer uh, writing parking citations and, of course, all through. Uh, um, just for the, for the body, the improper parking could include anything under 9.30.030, which is stopping, standing, or parking prohibited in specified places. And again, that would be on a sidewalk, within an intersection, um, within uh, on a safety zone adjacent to the curb, within 30 feet of points of the curb, immediately opposing both ends, alongside. So there's multiple definitions. I suppose it could be improper parking as described by uh, and given that code in the parking uh, ordinance would would, would, could clean it up or make it more clear. Thank you, Mr. Oman. Mr. Flynn. I don't have anything for you, Chief. You want to sit down? Thank you, Chief. Mr. Pollock, may I have a moment of your time, please? I'll have you back up here.
Yes, would, sir. Would you have any terrible heartburn if we deleted the words but is not limited to? Um, I wouldn't have any particular heart uh, burn with it. I think uh, Chief Mew was correct in the sense that there could be a parking violation that's not listed in there, and that's that's what we assume our task would be, and I think that's what that language is for. So you no, know you don't have any heartburn with our deleting that language? I, I wouldn't. I think that covers most of uh, uh, what's going to be done. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Flynn? Um, and you sit down. Um, first, I'll offer an amendment. <clears throat> you have the floor, sir. On <clears throat> lines 18 and 19, delete the comma following includes, and but is not limited to. I'm sorry. The second was from Mr. Starr. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> is everybody clear the amendment? I'm sorry. I need to restate it was to delete the terms, but is not limited. Is that correct, Mr. Yeah, and the comma that precedes that comma. clause. All right. Is there discussion mm -hmm. on that amendment? Ma'am, sure. Seeing, I'm, Ms. Drummond. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Title IX, and there are many, many, many sections here, and I would be concerned that there is a parking violation that's included in Title IX that is not on this list that does apply to the outlined area in downtown. Um, can we... I think that would be covered still under improper parking, improper but, I, but parking. I didn't. But I didn't want to get a little too. I didn't want to be wide ranging here. So if this is not into effect until August, this is, this gives ACDA time to come up with the list of um, improper parking that will be covered, and uh, maybe we can take a look at it again before August first. Okay. Do you? Is that a question, to Mr. Pollock, ma'am, or do you want to? <clears throat> Um, I, th I think that would be, if, if I was Mr. Pollock, I would be looking at Title IX very carefully. <clears throat> okay. So I would, I would like to see that happen. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Not for me. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Is there, is there any further discussion about Mr. Flynn's amendment? Is there any opposition to Mr. Flynn's amendment? Mm -mm. Seeing none, Mr. Flynn's amendment is incorporated into the, the matter before us. May I finish up? Um, go ahead, sir. You still have the floor. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Pollock, Mr. Onstott, good to see you again. It's been a little while. Um, this legislation says it's about parking, but it's not. Not really. We're not hiring you to do parking enforcement. We're hiring you to improve the business climate in downtown Anchorage for visitors, vendors, and other people who work downtown. That means providing good customer service. That means promoting alternative locations for parking like the garages that you manage and the surface lots that you manage. And that means working with the community to educate them on all the good things that they can do to enjoy downtown without getting a parking ticket. So please take that away as your mission. This is about business development, not about parking enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Traney, you're next. Mr. Pollock, got a second? I've got a couple of questions for you. Relative to booting vehicles. I'm sorry, say it again. Are you guys envisioning booting parking violations downtown where they come and put a device on the car so it can't be moved? And how many violations would allow you to do that? Parking violations. That's a good question. I'm going to um, ask Rick Onstott to come up here for a minute. Rick's our parking director and is uh, on the front line day in and day out with regard to this. So, good, good evening, Rick Onstott, parking director, ACDA. Uh, four or more unpaid parking violations per municipal code make that vehicle eligible for tow or boot as a scoff law. Now what's the cost to boot a vehicle? The uh, boot removal fee is $50. So we'll apply the boot, and once the customer has paid their fines, the boot will be removed and we'll assess a $50 fine. Now is there anywhere in code where it says it's $50? Uh, the or code... Is it just, I want to make sure we've got the vehicle that it can't be changed right, without I coming back to us. 
Yes, sir. I believe the code is written presently such that the traffic engineer has the ability to establish uh, booting and impound fees. And wherever the code language has dictated that in the past, the traffic engineer has deferred to ACDA. So where would you department. tow the vehicles if they're in fact booted? We won't tow. Uh, we will defer to the police department uh, to so do all towing. Tow? We, we would apply the boot to restrain the vehicle to give the customer the opportunity to satisfy the fines. And if they did not or could not, and it reached the point where we needed to call the police department for the tow, we would do so. I watched uh, some t reality TV that shows what happens in Philadelphia and Detroit. And what they do when the people come to get the car out, they want they check to make sure they've got their cars are registered and everything else to be paid up to include parking fees before the car is released. And so are you planning on how big is the staff you guys would have to deal with this issue of booting? We have a full-time administrative staff of six customer service representatives, so we're, we're well-staffed to be able to do that. Uh, with real-time access via handheld computers for the enforcement staff so they can see the recent uh, violation activity per license plate. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Tucker? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I had my light on uh, in reference to the amendment. And uh, as uh, Paul Honeman, Assemblymember Honeman stated, I, I would be concerned that the things that are listed as parking under 9.30, 9.32, and several others aren't all included in this very tiny list that is included in the ordinance. So. Um, I defer to the Department of Law who drafted this on uh, that, but I'm just uh, letting the Assembly know that I'm not sure without um, specifying at least the codes that it's going to be an enforceable, an easily enforceable ordinance that the Assembly is uh, attempting to pass this evening. Okay, thank you. And just for future reference, if it's debate on an amendment, I'm going to need you to signal somehow because the cue I typically assume is for the main motion. So I apologize, Ms. Tucker. I didn't realize you were waiting to speak to the amendment. All right, Mr. Honeman. Yes, and that's what I was kind of looking. I was going to defer to our council and municipal attorney's office. Um, I believe we could likely, if we since we've taken the not limited to out, we could actually include um, under item seven line 26, improper parking as defined by AMC 9.30 and 9.32. And that, in that's those chapters, defines improper parking. Mr. Honeman, is that an amendment I, I, or a question? I make a movement to amend the code uh, line, item 7, line number 26. Improper parking as defined in AMC 9.30 and 9.32. And ask for a second. Second. Mr. Honeman, is it all right if we check with legal to see if they're comfortable with the site? Dee or Julia? I am concerned that in Title IX there's other sections that might ne be necessary to cite for uh, to include all the different types and under those sections. These two. Um, I don't know what to suggest here, Mr. Honeman. Would you like to, uh, to confer with legal and we could hold on this and finish the agenda? We could, we could do that. It, would that be all right? That would be fine. Would there be objection from the body if we just continue this one down the agenda a little bit to give Mr. Honeman some time? Yes. Okay. Seeing no objection, um, this one is on hold and moved down the agenda for a short period of time. With that, we are at item 14B on the agenda, which is AO66. This is an ordinance amending code section 10.60.057 to clarify the prohibition concerning... Wave reading. All right. Basically, um, this is ice cream vendors and sexual offenses. If anybody would like to speak to us on this matter, please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, public hearing is closed. Second. Is there discussion? 
Seeing no one in queue, please vote. That item passes unanimously. The next item before us is 14C, AR-156. This is a resolution approving an alcohol beverage conditional use for a package store and license number 5054 in the B3 district for, okay, um, this is for a liquor license. If anybody would like to come forward and speak to us on this matter, please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, public hearing is closed. Second. Is there discussion? Mr. Honeman would like to speak to this matter. Referring to legal on this last one. I had pulled this one, uh, and this is a, a new package store license request, and uh, again, under the conditional use permit is required. Uh, would like to add that 100% ID check be required for this, uh, placed on the conditional use, um, again, in deference to the uh, recent ordinance passed. Mr. Herman, can I ask you a question, or maybe to legal? I assumed that since it was a package store, it was already there, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I, I, yeah, my interpretation, well, I'd like to clarify, if it's in code, it doesn't, that supersedes what the conditional use permit says, and it's in code. That's my understanding, too, but maybe we could ask legal to confirm. Yep. Through the chair, I don't think that the redundancy of uh, putting it, or at least notifying the on this conditional use, because that 100% uh, ID check isn't effective yet. Yeah. And so it's good to uh, alert the condition holder that there is a new code, even though our code hasn't been, uh, our books aren't uh, totally updated, and that it will apply to this establishment as it would to all establishments on the effective date of that 100% ID check. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Honeman, if you could specify a line and be specific on where you'd like that. And also, did we, who was the second on that? Yes. I'll second it, Madam Chair. If you don't have anybody seconding, I'll do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Hall had seconded. I just had gone from that screen. Thank you. It would, uh, it's, it would seem to me that uh, it could fit uh, fine under uh, item number six, uh, line 11, and basically state condition uh, that 100% ID check be required at time of sale, and then move six to number seven and move number seven to number eight, renumbering those two. So you'd like a new number to say, or the, uh, the new number six to say? That's correct. Okay, and if you could write it out for the clerk. Will do. All right, does everybody understand the wording of the amendment? All right, just a minute. The clerk has requested that the, you restate one more time, Mr. Honeman. Yep. Could you please, sir? Requires 100% ID check at time of purchase. Could I, Mr. Honeman, if you don't mind, Ms. Tucker, could we make that a sentence somehow? Could you see this ordinance requires? Madam Chair, may I, may I offer an observation to the body? Please, sir. If you read page 45 of this, of this documentation, the narrative, um, it reads, some of our policies will be, number one, everyone gets carded. Given that factor and the uh, ordinance, we've got a belt, we've got suspenders. I don't really think we need duct tape, too. <laughs> All right, but there is a, a motion on the floor, an amendment on the floor we need to deal with. Mr. Honeman? Yes. Do you still want to pursue your I, amendment? I, I, it doesn't. I think, Ms. Tucker, uh, stated it fairly clearly. It doesn't hurt having the redundancies. I recognize that the petition 
suggest that they will have that as their policy. And I know that it was a recent, in the last year, a uh, package store owner who came in and said at one location he would do 100 percent ID check, and the next time he testified at a different location, uh, when asked, he balked on it. And so, you know, policies can change internally. I think if it's on the conditional use, it's, it's a clear sentence, and I believe it applies. I think it I think it's, uh, just bolsters our requirement. All Thank right. You. And just to make everybody clear, the language would be a new number six that says requires 100 percent ID check at time, time of, of purchase. purchase, at time of purchase, and then the other numbers would be moved down. Is there any discussion on that amendment, further discussion? Mr. Starr on the amendment. Unless I missed the purpose of the 100 percent ID check, it was in conjunction with the sale of alcohol. And, and I believe what could be the potential here, if you just are so blatant that anything that he sells needs to have a 100 percent ID check. That's my challenge here is what if I just go in there to buy a, a corkscrew or a, or a cheese basket I guess the the ordinance that we spend a lot of time on in the 100 percent ID requirement um, seems to make sense that it's clear and it's intended for the prevention of, of uh, underage sales and alcohol related sales. So it seems contrary to say this gentleman's conditional use um, in, in particular that he has the right to do other things besides sell alcohol. So it seems to be worded if you took it in a literal sense, you would have him check an ID for everything that anybody would come in there to buy. Even though you have to be of age to enter the store, that may be kind of cumbersome to say, I'm buying a cheese basket, can you check your ID? So I guess I'd, I'd just as soon not support it. The expansion seems overreaching. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on the amendment specifically? Madam Chair? Mr. Might I add la two words to the last of that line of the amendment, the purchase of alcohol? Well, he can amend the amendment that's before the body to add the words, what? Of alcohol at the, instead of 100% time at purchase. Is that seconded? Second. Second. All right. There is an amendment to the amendment to add the words of alcohol. Is there discussion to the amendment to the amendment? Seeing none, um, is there objection to the amendment of the amendment? There appears to be no objection, so that is incorporated. Thank you. The amendment now reads, I'm sorry, <laughs> require 100% IG ID check at time of purchase of alcohol. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing no further discussion on that, I'm going to put that one on the board. Please vote. And that one passes 8 to 3. So that is incorporated. Is there anything else? Mr. Flynn, you're next. I, I had rung in to speak to the amendment, so I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Starr? No, that was okay. Mr. Honeman? That's it. All right. Seeing no one else in queue, please vote on this matter as amended. And that passes you, right? Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item before us is 14D. This is an ordinance amending certain sections of Title 32 of the Anchorage Municipal Code governing MLNP to enhance business practices and communications. If anyone would like to speak to us on this matter, please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, public hearing is closed. Move to postpone indefinitely. Second. Okay, I'm going to request that you guys get in queue, um, but I, I did hear you and you did post in. Ms. Ennis, you were in queue. You were the only one in queue. Would you like to say anything? We can't hear you, ma'am. If the will of the body is postpone this, then I'll withdraw my comments. If uh, this is going to be heard uh, tonight, then I do have some comments. All right. There is a motion on the floor to postpone indefinitely. Ms. Gray Jackson would like to speak to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. I brought this ordinance forward, and I brought it forward because I'm adamantly opposed to um, what this body approved in terms of MLMP and AWW at the last meeting. 
And um, I do not support postponing it indefinitely, regardless to what people think the votes are. I, there's a point to be made here, Madam Chair, and I would like to hear what Ms. Ennis has to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Ennis, there's a request to hear your comment. Thank you. Uh, this ordinance proposes to uh, amend Title 32, and that uh, title was entirely repealed by this body uh, two weeks ago. So I, I don't think structurally you can amend a repealed title. Anything else, Ms. Gray-Jackson? Thank you, Ms. Ennis. Seeing no one else in queue, please vote. This is the motion is to postpone indefinitely, and I <laughs> wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Starr. This is a, uh, this matter is postponed indefinitely. The next item before us is 14E. This is. AR 144, a resolution approving the HLB annual work program and five-year management plan. And as previously announced, this matter will be continued and there will be a work session. However, if you would like to speak to us on this matter, you certainly are free to. Is there anyone who would like to speak to us on this? Hearing and seeing no one, the public hearing is continued. Mr. Traney? So we're scheduled, uh, work session scheduled for on this? 24th at noon. We have one just previous on the IT at 11. I would ask the administration to please bring forward your plan for divesting Anchorage of all the land that we own in Girkwood, or at least starting the process of doing that. Right now we're the largest land owner is the city of Anchorage down in Girkwood, and I want to see that changed. So if the administration will come forward with a program to make that happen, I would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I need a motion to continue. Second. Is there objection? Go ahead, Mr. Starr. Well, just uh, ask the administration to clarify Appendix D as welfare accuracy. Um, that would be only my request there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if there's any additional questions or concerns on the HLB plan, um, could you send them to Mr. Vicalis? Thank you. That item is continued. The next item before us is 14F. This is AR 151, a resolution approving a letter. Late okay, this is basically between IBEW regarding a plant operator alternative shift agreement. If anybody would like to speak to us on this matter, please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, public hearing is closed. Thank you. <laughs> um, it was moved by Mr. Traney and seconded by Ms. Johnston. Is there any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, please vote. Are we done? That item is approved unanimously. The next item before us is 14G AR 152. This is a resolution appropriating $700,000 from interest earnings within the MOA Trust Fund for expert financial Wait, management. Reading. Is there anybody who'd like to speak to us on this matter? Please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, public hearing is closed. Thank you. Mr. Starr. Ms. Mahoney, do we pay the uh, the company travel time under the 700000 or do they have expense requirements outside of that for the professional management fees that we get? Do we travel around the country uh, under this, this amount of money, or how, how is travel arranged? That's a lot of money. No one from the municipality or anyone on the advisory committee travels associated with this fund. However, the money managers travel to see us. Their expenses are included in their fees, so there is no additional expenses for travel. Thank you. That's all I needed. Appreciate it. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, please vote.
That item passes unanimously. Madam Chair. M um, Mr. Honeman, we were going back to yours now? Yes, that's what I was going to uh, – I knew this was the last item we had. Uh, in talking with the Municipal Attorney's Office and our Council, uh, it's recommended that we postpone action or vote on uh, item 14A until the next meeting. It gives legal a chance to define Ill improper parking. Uh, it is something that should be addressed before we pass the ordinance. So your motion is to continue? Continue. All right. The, if you could post it on the board on that, sir. And is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Ms. Ennis, before we vote on that, did you want to make a comment? No. Sure. All right. The motion to continue this matter on uh, is before us. Mr. Traney, you are in the queue. Do you want to speak to the, the I motion? I just had a question again from the, what will be the parking authority, unbooting vehicles. Could you just give me a response as to the hours you guys will be open for the people to reclaim their vehicles? How many hours a day will you guys be open so they can get their vehicles back? You don't have to do it now. Just send it to me via email, okay? All right. Any I just don't want it to be where they can't get it back. I was going to suggest that if we continue this, if people could send questions in, it would be helpful. All right. Yeah. Is there objection to continuing this to the next meeting? Seeing none, then we have continued the delegation for downtown enforcement of parking violations to our next meeting. Thank you. Um, at this point, is there anyone in the room who would like to speak to us on any matter? Hearing, seeing no one, we're at assembly comments. Mr. Birch, any comments? No comments. Mr. Flynn. Ms. Johnston. Mr. Trombley. Mr. Starr. Yeah, just briefly, um, Mr. Rod is not here anymore, but I wanted to make sure that on the consent agenda we approved the McDonald Center upgrade tonight. It was a $5.4 million uh, goal of, of primarily Mr. Rod in our community to do that. And, and as you know, uh, the way we tax ourselves out there, there will be no debt incurred on that. We had the money in the bank to do that. And um, just kudos to Mr. Rod and Mr. Mayor, if you can be sure you tell them we really appreciate it, even though it looked simple on the consent agenda. I know a lot of hard work went into that. So our community will be better served for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hall? No. Ms. Gray Jackson? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Hortman? Yes, something I forgot to mention at the beginning, but uh, just a reminder that on Monday, this past, just yes, uh, yesterday, um, Maltosi and AK Pride received the largest ever donation in the 10 years running of um, the program that's sponsored, excuse me, and from the Today Show, Mr. Al Roker was up here, and, and, and there's a program. I can't. I had it on the tip of my tongue till just now. In any event, uh, uh, Mr. Tosi has uh, run a great, great program in this community, oftentimes on a shoestring. And just recently, I saw him uh, getting back and forth on a long, what looked like a surfboard, but for him, it's a skateboard and a two by two that he was using to help propel it. Uh, <laughs> one of the one of the uh, donations was a new Toyota pickup to AK Pride, so I know he'll put that to good use and uh, just continue support for AK Pride. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Traney? Nothing, ma'am. Ms. Drummond? Um, I thank you for um, earlier giving us your intended schedule with Title 21, Madam Chair. I have a few more questions that have popped up. Would you like me to um, send those to you by email or? Oh, however you'd like. Okay. There's, there's quite a number of them, and I don't think it would be useful to read them okay. online, but I'll send them, I'll, I'll send them to you and uh, look for an answer. Thank you. And the next, perhaps by the next meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, we are done. I'm assuming there is a motion to? Very good. We're adjourned. <laughs>